Before we get started with our presentation, I'd like to thank Nicole Schmidt and Allison Geary for all of their work in making this webinar series possible. They take care of all of the uh, technological functions, if you will. That way we can concentrate on listening to the speaker and gathering our questions for them. So thank you so much, Nicole and Allison. I'd also like to thank Eric Ishiwata. Eric is a CSU professor. He also leads the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts for the Office of Engagement and Extension. And he has made funding available so that Ali can join us. And you heard from Ali uh, in the introduction. And so Ali, thank you for all of your fine work in making this uh, possible for people that want to be able to hear the information in English and or in Spanish. And we'd like to welcome our guest, Kristen Mullen, is from the College of Liberal Arts. So Kristen, we're going to turn this over to you, and we look forward to your presentation and learning more about the College of Liberal Arts. Thank you so much. I will go ahead and share my screen. Here we go. So this image was made to show the richness and uh, diversity of textures and places and things that our college is. So this is the College of Liberal Arts that we will be talking about today. I'm going to give an overview of the college, then talk about the value of liberal arts and share some scholarship opportunities today. So, Colorado State University is a large university divided into eight colleges. The College of Liberal Arts is the largest of the eight colleges in terms of what we offer. So we have 19 majors, um, 54 concentrations, which are more specific uh, things you can get into within your major, and then 40 minors, which are extra uh, subjects that you can add on to your major. And here is a list of all of our majors. We can start with the arts. We have art history, dance, music and music therapy, and theater. And you can see that those with the asterisk uh, means that you can have the teacher licensure option in that major. In humanities, we have communication studies, English, ethnic studies, history, languages, literatures, and cultures, philosophy, women and gender studies, uh, social sciences, anthropology, that would fall under what like archaeology is in, economics, studying finances, geography, journalism and media communication, political science, and sociology. So studying people, why they do things, how they affect their environment. And then we have our interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary liberal arts puts all of this together and international studies uh, breaks down culture and languages and kind of mixes and matches throughout these. So we have a lot uh, that you can do. We also encourage our students to um, Add, add an extra major on or a minor. And you can do that in liberal arts because it's flexible in terms of the courses that you can take. So adding something extra on doesn't necessarily add on time uh, that you need to spend here at CSU. Um, we see students that do international studies with political science, English with history, for example, um, political science and uh, ethnic studies. So these are great to mix and match with. This is just one option. Um, we have a lot of accelerated master's programs. So your bachelor's degree is typically four years. Your master's degree is typically two years. Um, this puts those together and you can get both degrees within five years. So this is the accelerated master for public policy and administration. And you can see that our political science, sociology, uh, economics, and international studies are all um, available to do this accelerated program. We have this great place um, on our website called Choose Your Path. Um, it's an excellent place to start. If you heard something that sounds interesting to you, this kind of allows you to take the unique things that you like to do, what your dreams are, and shows you what in the college and on campus uh, matches your interests. Who is a typical liberal arts student? 
there isn't any. We nerd out about a lot of different things. Um, we're out, you know, studying the earth. We're on campus, uh, joining communities in class, um, learning about all kinds of different things. Um, we have students that are on stage even. This is our music therapy class, which is pretty interesting. These students are learning how to heal uh, different traumas through, through music, which is pretty cool. We have quite a large group of students that are first generation students, which means that um, they are the first person in their college to go to university, 30% uh, students of color. And then we have these excellent five resources for students that are first generation, even if you're not first generation. Um, these are places where you can learn how to balance your schedule, um, access to food, access to how to build a community, uh, are just some examples of how these different spaces on campus can help you. So in the College of Liberal Arts, we're all about critical thinking and problem solving and using creativity to kind of solve the world's problems. Um, at the end of the day, we're trying to make you not just a, a good professional, but a reflective citizen and um, equipped to be a confident leader. So eventually, a lot of our students uh, do move into leadership um, spots in, in their profession. We have our student centers. Many of our students um, are involved. Right now, several of our CLA, which is College of Liberal Arts Ambassadors, um, volunteer at the Women and Gender Advocacy Center as advocates. And we have uh, several students in El Centro. So these are really cool places to go, build community. And then we have all of these clubs and organizations. So just in the College of Liberal Arts, we have 40 different clubs and organizations. If you're studying a language, um, you if you don't use it, you lose it, right? You can join a club and, and make friends that are practicing that language too. If you're studying something like journalism or communications, we have magazines, um, web programs, all of these things. In art, we have our guilds. Uh, if you're into photography or something like metal smithing, you have the guilds. So there's a lot of really cool places to meet other students. These are just a few examples. Um, up in the left-hand corner, we have our sign language club, which is advocating for uh, more um, space on campus to, to show off what they've learned. In the bottom left, uh, you have the jewelry making guild. The bottom right, you have uh, a production club. And then the top right picture shows um, whenever the weather's nice, our clubs and organizations go and they set up in the Lori Student Center Plaza, which is like the center of campus, um, and showcase what clubs and organizations are going to. So that's a really cool opportunity to go meet others and see all of the different clubs in person. Something else really great about the College of Liberal Arts is our faculty. We are a research uh, university, but our teachers are not just concerned about writing research papers. They're also really invested in their students and seeing their, their students as, you know, human beings also. If you take the time to get to know your teachers here, um, they're really great. Um, I'm, I am a prior student. They're really great at telling you things that um, are about your interests, such as a presentation that's going on or a travel abroad opportunity that matches what you're studying. So they're a great asset here. We also have our academic success coordinators. So each department has their own ASC and that is the person that helps you orient yourself on campus. They're the first person that you meet when you get here. Um, they can help point you in the right direction of the hundreds of different resources that we have here on campus. And they're also the person that helps you set up your course schedule. Um, if you do want to add a major, change your major, add a minor, though, that's the person to go to. This is Kelly. Uh, he is actually our Languages, Literatures, and Cultures ASC, and he's also a yo-yo master. Okay, spaces of the liberal arts. 
So here we can see um, up in the left-hand corner, we have Eddie. Uh, Eddie is the building that hosts English, philosophy, and ethnic studies. We have one of our theaters. You can see an art studio here over in our visual arts building. Our bone lab for our anthropology students. Clark uh, is in the middle at the bottom there. That's the building that hosts a lot of our classrooms and behavioral sciences, which is our other main building. That's just a few of the many that we have. We also have the Career Center and the Lurie Student Center. Um, that is the go-to place. You can't get there soon enough. Um, it's never too early to check out career exploration, learning about different careers that match your major, um, our career and internship fairs. They can help you prepare your resume, do mock interviews. And as you get closer to um, graduating, they can even help with things like salary negotiation and how to advocate for yourself um, in the professional space. So those are really great. Also, and now we'll talk about the value of liberal arts. So we don't know what kind of jobs are going to exist in the future. Things are moving at such a quick pace, but this is Forbes list of the top 10 most in-demand skills for the next uh, 10 years. So digital and data literacy, we start that right um, when you get here in Composition 150, you learn how to do research, how to write a paper, how to use a database. And these other skills happen naturally while you're here. Um, the picture that you see here is our organization, which is the CLA Ambassadors. So these are students that volunteer with the liberal arts. They do our tours and help us at events. And it's a really cool way to build community and develop your professional voice. So they're learning how to talk about what they're learning in class uh, and explaining that to other people, which is really cool. We also value experiential learning. Uh, each course in the, or each department in uh, the liberal arts has a course dedicated to um, some sort of, you know, field learning. Uh, you're, you're in the community and you're doing something involving your major. So anthropology has their field schools where they go out in Wyoming and Colorado and dig for bones. Um, our political science students, for example, can go to uh, our state legislators or even go to DC for their internships and work on legislation. The Center of Public Deliberation, uh, that is located here in Fort Collins, and that's where the community can meet with students and problem solve uh, local issues. And then the Undergraduate Research and Creativity Showcase is where you can show off um, everything that you've learned here, basically senior year, and show your research to the community. It's a great opportunity for networking. We have our summer extension internships also. Um, these are different because they are the full summer, um, they are paid, and you get a faculty mentor. So two problems that we have here locally are language barriers and healthcare and wildfires. So our students work with their professors and the local community to help uh, fix these problems. Education abroad is something that a lot of our students in liberal arts do. It's very flexible. Um, they can happen over winter break, summer break. You can do a full semester or just a short two-week course somewhere. Each department goes to different places and tackles uh, different complex issues. So if that's something that you're interested in, we'll talk a little bit more about that in scholarships. And the environment, if you're interested in the environment, um, we have a lot of our courses that are taking an environmental lens, and we also have a mountain campus. So history, English, philosophy, and art go up to the mountain campus, which is about 90 minutes um, into the Rocky Mountains from our local campus here on Fort Collins. 
and uh, the students stay in this cabin. And during the day, they hike while they're in class and uh, the professor does class. And then they come back and they do their readings for the day and they can do recreational sports, play card games. There's no cell phone service up there. So it's a place to become close friends and just kind of focus on what you're there to do. So that's a really cool opportunity. All right. Let's move on to some of our current students. Our students come from all over um, the, the nation. We have a lot of international students and they're doing a lot of different things. So this is just a, a list from our 2017 survey that shows um, some of the jobs that our, our students are doing. Um, you can see everything from teacher to attorney to legal assistant to doctor. One of our current students, Eric, who is from Otero County, he's doing theater. And um, as you can see, he's involved in tons of clubs. He's gotten a lot of really good scholarships and has found his favorite instructor, um, which was acting too. Uh, so he is learning how to be a performer. Abby is studying international studies and political science. She is from Denver County, and uh, you can see her favorite thing about CSU is forming a community here. She's also involved in a lot of clubs. She's gotten some good scholarships and um, got to meet her favorite instructor actually while she was traveling abroad with her. So that's a pretty cool story. Noah is studying economics from La Plata County, and um, he's in the finance club, which matches his major. And uh, by learning finance 355 with his favorite instructor, he's figured out what kind of job he wants to do and that he wants to move to Denver. So he's got a clear path for himself. Cece is studying journalism and media. Um, she's from Dolores County and uh, she loves the people here. She is working as a news reporter for our newspaper, The Collegian, and uh, has won some, some awards while she's here. Um, her professor, Bradley Kay, was tough, uh, had a lot of difficult material, but really motivated her and encouraged her to do her best and led to her winning some awards. So she's having a good experience too. Now let's take a quick look at some of our alumni. Madison, she graduated from English and she is now a TikTok guru doing digital marketing. Um, so she has started her own company and is also working for an e-commerce platform, uh, helping with their strategy. Whitney studied theater and ethnic studies. Um, she won a fellowship while she's here and now she's working on New York productions of some really interesting um, plays that are going on there. Corinne, if you're a fan of YouTube, um, Wendover Productions is a really cool kind of short video production company, and Corinne is writing stories for their for their videos. So her history and political science uh, degree has really set her up to do well there. Gallen works um, as a development manager in philosophy and ethnic studies, so she is now working for Rewire News Group. And Brennan works here. Uh, he did interdisciplinary and he helps design some of our websites here on campus. So he's continuing to um, do what he loves. All right, let's finish up with our scholarships. So our website, libarts.colostate.edu slash scholarships has an interactive website where um, over 300 scholarships are listed and you can view all of them or kind of break them down by department, year, um, type, and show specifically what scholarships match your interests. That opens October 1st and finishes March 1st. I always recommend gathering scholarship materials at least two months ahead of time uh, so that you're not stressed out at the end. It's always helpful to kind of get started early on that stuff. The Blake Leadership Scholars Program is our biggest scholarship. Um, it requires a 3.8. Um, you 
have to apply and do an interview. So it's a little bit competitive, but it's definitely worth to, to apply for. So that deadline is always at the beginning of February and it's $3,000 a year. You get to work one-on-one uh, -on -one with a professor. You get a really cool cohort of eight students each year. So definitely keep that in mind. You also have to be admitted into honors to be in that scholarship. Um, and both of those things are flexible. So if you're not quite at a 3.8, don't let that stop you. We also have special scholarships just for traveling abroad. If it's something that you want to do, um, but you don't think it matches your price point for what you want to pay for college, um, definitely check out those scholarships. And we've had a lot of students that uh, do go abroad and uh, find a program that matches what they're studying. So our students spend the first few years exploring careers, developing critical thinking, um, and learning how to be brave out in the world. And hopefully by the middle time that you're here, you're growing your leadership skills, you're working in groups and out in the community, and graduating with a really cool network of people that make you feel empowered and supported. One good place to check out if you do have social media, our Instagram can be a great place to see the most recent things that we have going on. Um, feel free to scan that QR code and that takes you right to the liberal arts Instagram. Here you can see some of the travel abroad um, programs that have happened, some individual student stories, um, concerts, things that are happening that uh, students are invited to come to. And like I mentioned, things that are happening at the Mountain Campus. This is my contact information. Um, if this is something that is interesting to you, please visit our website or feel free to email me or call me. And I would be happy to get that conversation started. Thank you. What questions do you have? That was an amazing presentation. Thank you, Kristen. And so as people are formulating their questions as Nicole or um, Allison are monitoring the chat box, I did have a few questions uh, to get us rolling. You mentioned that in an accelerated uh, program, you can do the bachelor's and the master's degree in five years. A ballpark figure about how many students are taking advantage of that opportunity in the College of Liberal Arts? That is a good question. So these are just starting. This is kind of the first few okay. years this is happening. So we don't have a big cohort now. That's why I'm trying to get the word out to prospective students. Okay. They'll be the first ones to kind of feel this out. They'll be the pioneers. Yes. Wonderful. In one of your slides, you mentioned how there's a lot of support on campus and it talked about it listed key communities. Could you explain a little bit more to students or counselors that are listening, watching this video about a key community and why that's a benefit? Yeah, so Key Communities is a community that students from underrepresented backgrounds and uh, first generation students can join. It is a living space, so they're around students from really diverse backgrounds, different places, um, students that have experienced different things, and they're there to be a backbone, um, especially in the first year that students are here to make sure that they're feeling supported. Um, they do seminars that talk about some of the shared experiences that first generation students have. So that's, that's what Key Communities is. Okay, so they're basically a support group is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, and they're even given a mentor. So students that experienced first year as first year students then uh, grow up to be mentors that help the first year students. Now, I know that some key communities at CSU have a certain residence hall where they live. Is that true for the College of Liberal Arts and your key communities? Um, it is not. So art has their own okay. um, residence space, but that's the only one that has a particular residence space. Okay. Thank you. And then there was great to see the information about scholarships, because that's one of the things that we've heard as we've been working in the mountain region uh, and my counterparts in the other regions of Colorado is that scholarships are needed and important for our students that might want to come and join us, the high school students. On average, is, uh, what is a scholarship amount? I know that the Blake one was $3,000 a year, but there's over 300, I think you said, in your, in your college alone. Ballpark figure as far as a uh, scholarship amount? 
Yeah, so one thing that I see um, students kind of thinking is that they're going to get one scholarship that's for a lot of money. Typically, you have scholarships that are like $1,000, $500, $3,000, you apply, and okay. those build up um, to, to support you. So uh, we also have scholarships that just by applying to CSU, our students are um, going to get. Some of those can even be, that's not for the liberal arts, but just for the university in general, about $15,000. So they can be pretty big, but most students get by on adding up a bunch of smaller scholarships. And Kristen, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's one of the things. And when I'm visiting with high school students um, in the 13 regions that I serve, is that you may not get that full right scholarship because a lot of them don't exist for academics, unfortunately. But there's scholarships when you apply to CSU or the university that you're looking at. Uh, there are scholarships specific to your major, specific to your interest, et cetera. So I'm so glad that you emphasize that. Um, and let me make one more remark on that. So some students get discouraged because they don't get a scholarship freshman year, mm -hmm. but a lot of donors, um, they want to give money to students that are definitely committed to being here. So the scholarships lean towards sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So even if you didn't get a scholarship freshman year, keep applying because you're more likely to get it as the years go on. Excellent. Great message. Thank you. It looks like we have some questions, both in the Q&A feature as well as the chat. What are those questions that have come through, Nicole and or Allison? Yeah, well, thank you very much, Kristen, for that presentation. That was great. So in the chat, I just put those few handouts that you sent. So um, there is a list of the majors and minors within the College of Liberal Arts. Um, as well as the PowerPoint presentation that Kristen shared is um, sent as an attachment. And then the final thing is the rural initiative. So that just, um, Kristen has linked a lot of helpful resources um, that students or prospective students can um, click through. So that's what's in the chat there. And then we do have a, a couple of really good questions in the Q&A. Um, and these are, a lot for like online, Kristen. So if if you'd like, I'm also happy to help answer. Um, so the first one, how can online students be involved in their program outside of classes? So I would be happy for you to talk more on that. Um, I know that one of our students in the 64 project had to come to campus every once in a while. And whenever they would come to take a test or something, they would take that as an opportunity to go out in Fort Collins and kind of meet their classmates and build a relationship with them. So then when they went back online, they knew them as people. But I'd love to hear more about what you have to say on, on the online experience. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just going to share in the, in the chat a link to our CSU online degrees. Um, so we actually have a lot of online bachelor's degrees within the College of Liberal Arts. So just to name a few, communication studies, economics, interdisciplinary liberal arts, political science. But um, if anyone's interested, you can click that link in the chat or Allison will later have it um, in the description on the YouTube playlist. Um, but you can scroll through there and I would really encourage anybody who um, you know is maybe interested in kind of learning more about um, like how you can be involved. You can schedule an appointment. We have prospective student support coaches for all our online programs. Um, so on the web pages for whatever program you may be interested in, you can actually just reach out to a coach through um, phone, email, or schedule an appointment, and they can definitely you know go more in depth. But I know. Um, a lot of the resources that we have on campus are also available to online students, just like the Career Center. Um, but then you'd also have advisors um, as an online student as well, um, who work also with a lot of our on-campus students. Um, so you, you can definitely get some good resources and how to be involved. And I know a lot of like, clubs and organizations also sometimes have virtual events too um, for students that might not be local. Um, that are online. So there's that. <laughs> um, and then another question that we have is also kind of related to that. Are the professors and coursework the same for both 
online and in-person students? Um, and the answer I can tell you is yes. So CSU Online, our online degrees, they're just a direct extension of our main Colorado State University campus in Fort Collins. So your courses are taught by the same professors and instructors that teach those programs. Um, and also a lot of the times as an online student, you have the opportunity to tune in and watch course lectures live as they meet, which is another way to kind of get involved, ask questions, kind of interact with everybody in real time. Um, but I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, Kristen. No, I think that you summed that up really well. Um, I think that one thing that our our faculty learned during COVID was just the, uh, the value of the online classes. And a lot of them, I think, really enjoyed doing that. And now we have a lot more professors that are open to teaching online, uh, which was one cool outcome of that. Nicole, thank you for that clarification I, uh, on the chat versus the question uh, and answer feature. Do we have any other questions that we might be able to pose to Kristen regarding the College of Liberal Arts, the majors, the minors, scholarship opportunities, clubs and organizations? I'm not seeing any more questions, okay. um, but definitely feel free to reach out um, to any of us if you have questions in the future. Um, yeah, I really appreciate your time, Kristen. Uh, thank Kristen, you all so much for having me. Yes, thank you for including your contact information and the social media links for Instagram and some of that other information. Because again, as uh, we're recording this uh, webinar and it's going to be viewed later on. And so it's great that students and or others will have that option of being able to start to look for information on their own and or to be able to reach out to you. Because we know that it's important to have somebody that we can talk with and not just go on to a, a website. So thank you for your contact information. We greatly appreciate that. Yeah. All right, Kristen, thank you again for your uh, fabulous presentation on the College of Liberal Arts. Um, looking ahead, in February, we're going to be featuring the College of Business. So the College Connection webinar will continue, and we look forward to seeing you then in early February and hearing and learning about the College of Business. If we don't have any other questions, we're going to sign off for now. Again, I'd like to thank my colleagues from uh, Office of Engagement and Extension and Allie and the, uh, with her language justice uh, matters uh, information and of course our guest, Kristen. So until February, thank you so much and we'll see you then.